Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Wednesday webinar. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Power BI desktop and doing some navigation tips and just kind of an overall feel for how the Power BI desktop works. So a couple things to start out with. The Power BI desktop. This is something that is available to you to download for free. I always recommend anyone interested in Power BI begin by downloading the desktop and playing around with it there. From the desktop, you can connect to your data sources, you can work with your data, transform it, make changes, perform calculations, and you can create all the visuals on a report that you would want to see. The things that the desktop does not do is you can't share reports. And I put an asterisk by this because you technically can within the desktop connect to your data, create your report, save it as a PBIX file, which you would then email to a colleague or you know, you'll place it in a shared drive somewhere or something, and someone else can open that. And as long as they have the Power BI desktop installed on their computer, they could open up that file and see the report that you created. The thing to remember with the Power BI desktop is when you're connecting to those sources or you're refreshing that data, it's pulling your data at that snapshot in time. So if they're opening it two or three days after you sent it, you know, it wouldn't be the most up-to-date or current data. But technically, there is a way that you can share reports. It's just not uh, the type of sharing that people are usually looking for. A lot of times people just want to be able to give access to people to open up a report and it's refreshed, up to date, available online, you know, something easy. And that's more done on the online version of Power BI. The other things the desktop will not do for you is it will not do automatic refreshes. You can manually refresh your data once you set up your reports, but it doesn't do that scheduled automatic refresh and you don't create Power BI dashboards. Now, when I've worked with clients, a lot of times when they're looking for a dashboard, a report does suffice, uh, but there is something else within Power BI, what Power BI calls dashboards, and those are where you can pull tiles from multiple reports into one view, and then you would drill into different reports. So those are the main things that the desktop version does not do. And I just wanted to highlight those. We're going to spend the rest of the time today here within the Power BI desktop uh, doing a demo and navigating around that. One thing I wanted to call out for you guys, if you do not already have the Power BI desktop, you can go to powerbi.com. And if you go to the products, the Power BI desktop, here is where you can download the desktop version for free. So here I've got my Power BI desktop pulled up and I already have a report, a demo report that I've, that I've created just so we can see how some of the different buttons work and such. Uh, normally when you first launch this, of course it would be blank until you uh, create a report. And we're gonna work our way around. I'm gonna kind of start from this far right side over here. It's just what makes sense to me. So this is where we're gonna start. The very first pane we're looking at here is the fields pane. And within this, this is where all of the data sources that you've connected to are listed. And if you expand the tables, these are all the different fields you have to choose from. Within this pane, you can not only view all the fields here, you also can search for them. So for example, if I wanna see, you know, maybe a customer field, you can search through your fields instead of having to scroll up and down through them. You can perform some updates to your fields here as well. So for example, we're looking at this one, it's CNTC, this is for contact person, but obviously it's not spelled out. It is important when you're creating reports that your fields use the verbiage you use within your company. So you do have the capacity within this pane, if you select the little ellipsis here, to rename fields. You also can delete them if you're not going to need the fields or you can hide them if you want to keep them within your table but you don't want to see them on your entire list of fields that you can scroll through. So if we rename we can then change the field so if someone was creating a report then at a later time 
if they search now for contact, that field will appear. Another thing that you can do within this pane is you can create hierarchies. So an option that we have here on the ellipsis, you can see it says new hierarchy. Hierarchies are important because they allow you to create drill down charts. So for example, if you wanna look at something at a divisional level and then go down into branches, and then you wanna see by manager, that's creating a hierarchy within Power BI. Date fields will automatically have a hierarchy value of year, quarter, month, and then day. But you know the one that I just referenced, or maybe there's another hierarchy that you wanna look at, you would need to create your own. So if we create a new hierarchy, takes a moment to create it. So I started here with country. So I want country to be my hierarchy, and then I wanna go into city. So I'm gonna add that to the hierarchy. And then maybe I even wanna get into an address and add that to the same hierarchy. So what that does, and I'm just gonna go over to a blank page here so you can see that. If I pull the hierarchy over now, and it's automatically gonna to default to a map, which is fine, I'm just gonna pull that, let's say I wanna look at it by document amount. And I'm just gonna change it to a column chart here, and we'll look at this in a second, but I just wanna show you guys what a hierarchy does. So now we see that the chart here is starting at the country level. And if I turn on the drill down now, then it goes down into the city level. So that's the benefit of creating hierarchies, something that you may want to do. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And then if you ever have a field, like I mentioned, you can delete, you can also delete hierarchies. So now I know there are a lot of other things here on this ellipsis as well, like new measure, new column, new quick measure. Another tidbit for Power BI is there's gonna be about three or four different places where you can achieve the same thing. So we're gonna look at new measure, new column, new quick measure in the top toolbar here, but you also can create it here from this pane as well. You can also add your fields directly to filters or as a drill through from this field as well, but we're gonna look at those on the other tabs here. So that is this field pane. And within Power BI, so you can see that I no longer wanted to deal with that field pane for the moment, you can collapse it. The next pane we're looking at here is this visualization pane. Now there's a few things that you can do with this. So right here, this top side, these are all of the visualizations that are available to use within your report. So you can select on any of them and it gives you a blank box and you can start pulling fields in to create your reports. You also can, if you have a particular visualization selected, you can use this section to change the visualization type. So you can just scroll through those that way. On the little ellipsis button here, you can import a custom visual. You can have it from a file or from a marketplace. You also can delete custom visuals or restore them if you have them deleted. When you're importing from the marketplace, Microsoft has whole Microsoft or a whole marketplace full of visuals that are available for free that you can download and use on your reports. So an example of that, when we're looking at my sales report here, this little scrolling bar at the top, that is a custom visual that I downloaded for this report, along with this progress to yearly goal. When you download a custom visual, it is only gonna be available for that report. So if you have three Power BI reports, you're gonna to have to download that custom visual for every report that you wanna use it on. Once you have downloaded custom visuals, they appear right here underneath the regular visuals that are available to you. Underneath the visual types, this is where you are working with data within an individual visual. So I have this column chart here selected and you can see it has the fields that I have selected. I'm looking at the sales order type by the extended price on that sales order. Some of the things that you can update from here, 
you can rename the field. If you rename a field here, it is only going to rename within that visual, visual. It won't change it on the fields list, but maybe for this visual, I want to put type of document. It will change it here so you can see now it's extended price by type of document. Um, if you use any of these fields, you know, if they were on your axis anywhere else, it would update there as well. So we could also rename this. I want to say this is actually extended price because I like to see things uh, typed out. You can see it says extended price. Now, if we look at our fields and we were to type in extended price, we're not going to find it because we didn't change the field name. We just changed the name on the visual. The field name still re retains that original name. The other things that you can do is you can change uh, the summarization of it. So right now for our chart, it is summarizing the value of the extended price. If we wanted to look at average, we could change that. Uh, minimum, maximum, we could do just counts, variance, things like that. So you also can change how it is calculating your total. Down here at the bottom, we have this drill through option. And what the drill through option allows you to do is it allows you to create a specialized page in your report that would expand on a particular field. So what I mean by that, when we're looking at this main page, you know, we have like our top 10 items and our top 10 customers. Maybe we want to know more about our customers. Like we want to pull up a page that's going to say, okay, I want to look at this top customer and I want to see all their sales transactions and know more data about them. So what we would use is a drill through page. And how you do that is you choose what field you're gonna look at. So in this case, we're gonna take that extended price because we were calculating our customers by extended price. And I'm gonna pull that here to the drill through field. And what it has done, it's created a back button and you always do this on the page that is going to be the place you want to drill through to. So now when I go to this main page, and I'm here, oops, I'm sorry, I did it on extended price, not document amount. We're gonna just do it on items here. Let's say we want to know more about an item because here's where we use extended price. Because I have extended price here, if I right click on this and I drill through, it takes me to that page. So that's how you can create places that uh, would give you more information if you want to be like, hey, I want to know more what's behind this number. I want like a specialized page. Uh, sometimes people do that if they want to drill into like a particular manager or division, they might create drill throughs for specialty pages. The other thing that you can do within this pane is this little paint roller here. This is where you can do all the updates to your visuals. You know, we're on a column chart here, so we can update axes, we can change the colors of the data points, we can add data labels, um, we can create a title. Right now, it's just automatically giving this extended price by type of document, but we could change the title, we could give it a background, and the different things you can format are different depending on the type of visuals you have. If you just have a table, they even have some conditional formatting where you could create rules. Uh, the conditional formatting, I will say, is very basic. It doesn't allow you to compare it to other columns within the table or anything. It's, it's rules like if it's above zero, it's green. If it's above 15, it's yellow, things like that. Very basic rules. But there are different options for every visual. Another thing that is available is this little analytics button and this is different it's only available on some visuals for example a column chart like we're looking at here it is available on that and here's where you can add things like a constant line to your chart you can add min and max lines so you know, you know if we wanted to add a constant line put that in and you can add things like that into your chart and you can format them Okay, so the next pane that we're gonna look at here is this filters pane. For some of you that already have the desktop downloaded and maybe have an older version, these filters options may be located over here um, 
right above the drill through. This is just the newer version. The filters moved over into their original or into their own paint. So could be a slight difference from the version you might be using. For filters, you can add them at an individual visualization level for the page or for all pages on your report. And in, it is, you see that a couple have popped in here just because that is uh, the fields that we selected for our visual. But if you wanted to use something like, I want to see only a particular country, you know, you could pull the country field over here. Well, these are all for the USA. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of the drill through here so we can see it all. Okay, so if we pull country over now, there are a few different types of filtering you can do within any of these levels. There's the basic filtering where you will have the list that you could select from. There is an advanced filtering method where it's, you know, the contains, equals, um, with number columns, it can be is between. There is also a top N, which is something that you can see here, like with our top 10 customers, we have here, you know, by the customer name, we want the top 10 by, and then we had to pull the value. What are we searching for? By document amount, we wanted to see the top 10 customers by document amount. Another thing that you can do with filtering, if you have a date column, or field, so let's pull over like document date. Date fields have relative date filtering. With relative date filtering, you can do, you know, is it in the last, this has, it defaults to 30 days. You can look at weeks, months, years, and also calendar weeks, months, years. And you can define, you know, look at the last two years, things like that. So you also can do relative date filtering. So now we're going to move over to the left hand side to look at the navigation over there. And here you just have three little buttons and this is just different uh, areas of your report. So the little chart icon that is going to bring you to your report face. So these are the visualizations you're creating. That's this blank space that you're creating your report on. The table icon, this takes you where you can see all of the data you've connected to in its tables. So we can scroll through any of these, you know, there's our employee name table, here's our sales transactions tables. So that's how you can view, view the specific data rows feeding your visualization. And then the last thing here on the navigation bar, this is our relationship pane. So this tells us about the relationships between all the tables. So I have six tables here and it's showing me, you know, our customer name table, it's connected to our sales transaction table through this customer number. Um, you can see some of them don't have any relationships at all. It is important if you're going to be pulling data from multiple tables onto one report that you do have relationships between the reports that you're going or the tables that you're going to be pulling together. A lot of times within Power BI, if you select one visual, the rest of the page changes. And if you don't have those relationships set up, those visuals won't update appropriately. Power BI automatically recognizes relationships when it's looking for columns that have the same uh, name. So you can see here the customer number ones, those are exactly the same. If one of the tables had it customer number spelled out, the other table had you know, this abbreviated cust number uh, verbiage, then you may have to set those relationships manually. Okay, now we're going to get to the toolbar where all the fun stuff is. We're going to start with this home toolbar. Similar to really any other tool, the first things we have here is we have cut, copy, and paste. It really is if you have a visualization selected, you can copy that visual. You could take it over and you could paste it in a new area. You also can just cut a visual out of that if you don't need it. You can also just have a visual highlighted, hit your delete button and it would do the same thing. But a cool tool up here is this format painter. 
So all that formatting that you have available for every visualization, you don't wanna to have to do that for every single one if you're gonna have multiple charts or as an example for mine here, I have multiple boxes. So when you have a format painter, so if you change something about a visual, so I'm just gonna change quickly the background color here of my title. If I do the format painter, it'll allow me to go over to another box and it'll apply that same formatting. It's just a helpful uh, kind of quick end to copying that over. It does not copy it multiple times. So you can see, I don't have my paintbrush anymore. I would have to again, select format painter and then pull it over to another one. It can be a little frustrating, but that's just how you do multiple ones. On this home toolbar, this is also where you will get data. You can connect to your sources. Um, so when you select get data, there's the most common ones. And if you click more, this opens up the whole list of source types that you can connect to to get your data. Recent sources pulls from all the different places you've recently pulled data from. You can see I've got quite a few for the different reports I've pulled from. Enter data. This allows you to create a table within Power BI. I don't see this used a lot, but sometimes you, maybe you want to create like a reference table. If you have like four plant locations and you use abbreviations, maybe you would create a table that spells out, you know, the full plant name and then has a column with that abbreviation so that you could relate it and then you could always pull out full names. Um, but other than that, you know, there isn't a lot of need to create huge tables, but you do have the ability to. Edit queries here. There's two things you can do with edit queries. If you just select to edit queries, that will launch the Power BI uh, Power Query Editor, where you can make changes to the query. So what it's pulling from and what it's questioning when Power BI is refreshing your data. That's a whole beast on itself that would take too long to explain right now, uh, but there is a blog post about it and we'll probably have future webinars just around the Power Query Editor. And then your data source settings, if you connect to a data source like uh, an OData link or your SQL server, and then something changes where now your files are hosted on a different server, you can come into your data source settings and you can just change where Power BI is pulling that from. So you can see here's my SQL server. If I needed to update that, that's where I could do it. So I wouldn't have to recreate or reconnect to the data. I can just update that data source. Here's where you can also manually refresh your data if uh, you had pulled this you know, a week ago and now you wanna see all the updated sales transactions, you can refresh your data here. This little box here, you can create new pages, a blank page or you could duplicate a page if you want more tabs or more pages within your report. If you select new visual, it's gonna pull up that box uh, and then you could start choosing your visualization. You know, we had originally selected it from visualization pane, just another way you can achieve that. Asking a question about your data is pretty cool. So if we go to asking a question about your data, it gives you a little box and you can start just asking questions. So with this, let's say we want to know our top customers by extended price. You, know, you can ask questions of your data to try and uh, create visualizations that you might want. This is why it's important to have them named as you would name that as you would use uh, within your organization because a lot of people wouldn't think to type in extended price that way. Creating buttons Adding text box, images, shapes, these are all similar to ways you can build things in Excel. You know, a text box, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the buttons and shapes, you can also use them to apply actions. So for example, here on my main page, this is a button that I've created that says go to CRM. And if I follow this link, it is gonna open up my, it's my demo CRM, allows me to log in. So that is why buttons and shapes can be helpful images every report i create i put a logo on it so that is where i usually use adding an image in custom visuals from marketplace and from file this is just another way to get to importing those custom visuals switching the theme so maybe you don't want to create an individual theme with all your data colors and things like that 
uh, Power BI does have some basic ones in here. Common one that I recommend is the colorblind safe, just because you never know who's colorblind and who's not. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for the dark purple though. And it's doing that because I had switched it to the blue. But the other things for the charts and things that colorblind safe, it really is helpful just in case you have people that are colorblind. Managing relationships, that's another way to pull up uh, and create those relationships that we talked about earlier. And then here's where you can also create new measures, new columns, or a new quick measure. Excuse me. The new measure, so when you create a measure, it is just a calculation on your data. You would use that when you want to do it on like a filtered set of data. You don't need to do it row by row, but maybe you want an average of every fulfilled order for a particular branch. That's when you'd use a measure. A new column really does create a new column at the end of your table and it would calculate it row by row. So if you did like an average on a column, it's an average for that row and there would be an average for each row. And then if you tried to put that on the face of your report and have an overall average, it becomes an average of an average. So a new column, you know, if you need to do like contract earned or like calculations like that on a row by row basis, if you're looking at like jobs, that's when a column, a new column is beneficial. Quick measures, these are just simple predefined measures that Power BI has available. So if you don't wanna type out a whole calculation, uh, like a formula, you can do a quick measure if you're doing something that is just a couple pieces of data. So for example, like a mathematical operation, if you wanna take multiplication and say you wanted to do unit price and I wanna multiply that by the quantity so I can get the total price that I've sold, you can do quick measures. Now, if you needed to apply a filter to that or anything, a quick measure wouldn't work. But if you have some simple calculation, you can do that. Once you create any of these, that will be available now in your field list. I didn't um, name mine anything, so it's coming across as measure, or if you have it where you have the full calculations, sometimes it'll come across as, here we go, we see unit price times quantity. Um, so that's how quick measures could work. And then you have a publish option here at the end, and that's if you're using the online version, you can publish your report to Power BI Pro. And I know we're running close to the half hour here, so we're gonna try and get through the rest of this as quick as we can. Your view toolbar, and this just gives you some different ways to view the report page that you're working on. So if this is gonna be used on the phone, you can use the phone layout to see how the report would look on the phone, and you can define where the different visuals will go. If you wanna use grid lines, See, now you can see I can see the grid line so it can help me create the reports in an aesthetically pleasing manner. You can snap objects to the grid if you wanna try and get them all, you know, starting at the same place, ending at the same place. You can lock your objects. The bookmarks pane does open another pane and this is where you can add and subtract different bookmarks which can be used with buttons or shapes, or you can even use it in a view within your online. It just bookmarks the filters. You know, you can set all your filters the way you want and bookmark it just like you would bookmark um, a website. Selection pane, this just allows you to choose a layer order if you have a lot of visuals. Syncing your slicers, if you create a slicer, so here we have a slicer, which is a filter that's available to be interactive with your report you can sync that across multiple pages. So you can see here, we can see it on our sales tab. We wanna add it where we can see it on our aquarium tab, we could add here. And then if we also select this, it means that if I select it on one page, it will carry through to the other page. So now if I choose this Aaron Fitz electrical and I go to my aquarium tab, we can see the same slicers there and it's already filtered to what I selected on the other page. Your performance analyzer, this is where you can monitor and see how long it's taking to query and refresh your results. And the last part that we're covering is this modeling tab. And there's not too much new here. Um, we can see manage relationships again. 
here's where you also can do a new measure or a new column or new table. So that's where you can enter a new table. The things that are new is you can work with your table data here in formatting and properties. So I'm on a date column here. You can see it has a data type and a format. If I want my date and time to appear differently, this is where I can select that. If I'm on a regular number column, so let's say I want to look at an extended price column here, you can see it's a decimal number and I've got it as a currency and English, you know, United States dollars. You also have percentages, scientific, different ways that you can format your columns. With numbers, you can also format the number of decimal points. You can you know, give it a dollar or percentage here as well. The other thing that's important here under the properties has to do more with locations. So you can see we have an uncategorized data category and then it's defaulting to a sum. First of all, for numbers, we'll talk about the default su summarization here. This is where I can change it to average, minimum, maximum. And when you pull that onto your report face, it will default to that. So instead of being a sum, it would default to average. You can also change it on the report face as we saw. Data category is important when you are dealing with locations. So we had on here where we created this country, address, and city, and you can see that they have a little globe by them. So if we're looking at the country, we see the data category as country region. Everything comes across as uncategorized, but here's where you can select what type of category it falls into. And you must do this with any location fields in order to get the map visualization. Uh, we're not gonna look at the security and groups and calendars. That's a little more advanced Power BI that we'll look at at a later date. Um, they do have within, it's just being tested out right now, this Q&A setup where you could create some standard questions or ways that people might ask questions and give some ideas uh, to help with that whole Q&A thing. Uh, but that is still in beta testing, so we're not going to touch that until they fully publish it. So I know this was a really fast navigation, but the idea is to give you guys some ideas. There's lots of places, lots of area that you can get to different results within Power BI. Uh, if you guys have any further questions or concerns with that, or you kind of want to know how is this going to work, definitely reach out to me. Uh, we also do have a Power BI training series that we've done in the past to take you through uh, creating reports. And so, yeah, you can check all of that out on our website as well. And I do have a lot of blog posts too that will give you little individual tips and tricks when working with Power BI. Does anyone have any questions right now? Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with me today, guys, and have a great rest of your day.